Hello and welcome to Revit Beginner Program. In this episode, we are going to talk about how to create custom wall types with multiple layers. To create a new wall, let's go into Architecture tab and select Wall. The height of the wall is governed by its instance properties. The thickness of the wall is governed by its type properties, which is why if you would like to create a custom wall thickness, we must go into the Edit Type. Before we change any of these type properties, Let's duplicate the type. Let's call this custom wall. Let's go to structure parameter and edit the assembly of this wall. Currently in this wall, we have one layer of 215 millimeters thick. The material of this layer is brick. Let's change this thickness to 110. I'm going to say okay to this. Okay. And let's create a wall. You can see here that now the thickness of the wall is 110. Let's go to the edit type and edit the assembly. Let's say I would like to create a wall which has multiple layers. For example, to begin with, the structural core of this wall is created with two layers of brick and in between we have a thermal air layer. So I'm going to insert one more layer here and call it thermal air layer. Let's give it a thickness of 20 millimeters. Let's choose a material for it, maybe air. I'm going to add one more layer, which is my structure layer. I'm going to give a thickness of 110. To assign this layer the same material as row 4, I can copy this material's name and paste it here. Now this wall has three layers, two brick layers of 110 millimeters and in between we have a thermal air layer. When you are assigning functions to these layers, the layer names are followed by the numbers in the bracket. These numbers from 1 to 5 indicate priorities by which the walls are going to create junctions. Let's see it in an example. I'm going to create a cross junction here. The thermal air layer, which has the priority 3, has allowed the structure layer, which has the priority 1, to pass through. This is the purpose of assigning functions to the layers. Let's go back to the type properties and edit assembly. The core boundaries here are not actual layers. These are just boundaries. They do not have a thickness and they do not have a material. They only indicate that all the layers which are within the core boundary belong to the structural core. All the layers outside the core boundary are not considered as part of its core. Let's say if we would like to add a plaster on the exterior side. Let's give it a function as substrat because it's a substructure for the finishes to come. Let's give it a thickness as probably 20 millimeters. Let's give it a material. plaster. I'm going to add one more layer for my paint. For the paint we have two options, finish 1 and finish 2. Typically finish 1 is used for exterior side because it has a higher priority than finish 2. This is because when an exterior finish and interior finish comes together at a junction, the exterior finish gets a higher priority and the finish 2 will let it pass. So for exterior layers, well, I'm going to use finish 1. The minimum thickness for any of these layers has to be 0.8 millimeters. So I'm going to give the paint layer 1 millimeter thickness. Let's give it a material. Let's say I'm going to put white paint on the exterior side. Let's move on to the interior side. Let's say I have a waterproofing layer between the core boundary and the interior finish. So I'm going to add one more layer and bring it down. Now minimum thickness I need to provide for these layers is 0.8 millimeters. But in real life, the thickness of waterproofing membranes are usually in microns. Create thickness which is less than 0.8 millimeters. For that, we can use the function membrane layer. 
Membrane layer is the only function whose thickness is allowed to remain zero. So if you would like to create a layer which has less thickness than 0.8 millimeters, then you can use it as a membrane layer. Let's give it a material as vapor retarder. And now let's add a finish substrate for our plaster layer. I can copy the name of the material and paste it here. Now to add paint on the interior side, I'm going to choose finish 2 because it has less priority than the finish 1 on the exterior side. The thickness of this is 1 millimeter. And let's give it a different color this time so we can see the difference between the exterior and interior paint. Let's say OK to all of this. Let's go to 3D view. Here you can see that we have a red color paint on the interior side and white color paint on the exterior side. Now let's put this in shaded mode to check our colors. In this case you can see how the interior paint has allowed the exterior paint to pass through. By assigning the functions in correct order with correct priorities, we allow Revit to create junctions automatically. For example, this T junction or an L junction or a cross junction like this. However, we have not provided any settings to Revit about how to treat the open ends. Let's go and change that. Let's go to the type properties and edit assembly. Here we have two options, how to deal with open ends and how to deal with inserts. For example, if you insert a door or a window, how to deal with those junctions. Here, let's specify that we would like to wrap the exterior finish and ends. In these layers, you may specify which of these layers are going to be used for wrapping the ends. For inserts, let's choose both, which means substrate and finish one layer are going to be wrapped around the exterior side and substrate and finish two layer are going to be wrapped around the interior side. Let's say OK to this. And let's go and add a door. So here you can see that we have interior finish wrapped at the interior side an exterior finish wrapped at the exterior side. Let's go to the 3D view to see it. Because we specified the exterior finish to be wrapped at open ends, you can see here that we have white color paint on all the open ends. Before we move on to the next topic of how to place walls in your project, let's do a small exercise. You may pause this video at this point and try to create a custom wall type using these steps. In the next episode, we are going to place a few walls in our project. Subscribe this channel, stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next video.